in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our God, today we come to you. We come to say thank you once again for keeping us for another week. Keeping us for another month. Keeping us for almost the entirety of the year 2023. And we know and we trust in you that you that you started this work of keeping us, you will be faithful to see us unto the end in the mighty name of Jesus. As we have started off seeing this year 2023, and as we approach even what they call the dangerous ember months, we declare that Lord, you that have kept us this far, you will keep us into 2024. We declare that Lord Almighty, you give your angels charge over us, Lord. I declare that, Lord, we shall not dash our foot against the storm. I declare that, Lord, as we go about our normal business, you will be with us. No weapon form fashion against us shall prosper. As we move into the new year, Father Lord, we shall move into new blessings. We shall move into greater glory. We shall enter the new year with testimonies. Father Lord, we lift everything we do today unto you. We say, Father, open up the windows of heaven today. And pour us a blessing that we will not even have room enough to contain. We declare that you will do that which only you alone can do in our lives today. We declare that, Lord, today you will surprise each and every single one of us in a special way. You will speak a word that will enter our spirit, enter our soul, enter our body. Be so explosive with your spirit that, Lord, we shall receive freedom today in the name of Jesus. For the second Corinthians says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we declare that, Lord, your spirit shall make each and every single one of us free today. Free of all shackles, Lord. Free of death. Free of sickness. Free of lack. Free of every single thing that holds us bound. Father, Lord, we thank you for today. And we pray that your word, Lord Almighty, even for those who are ministering it, will also have a major impact on them also, Lord. So that they too shall not miss out on the glory of the living God. We thank you, Lord Almighty. Blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. So, greet somebody, say hello. How are you? How are you doing? Thank God you're here. Either in person or in spirit by Zoom. Glory be to God. There are some, some people that are anointed to pray. Powerful prayers. Prayer is a fantastic privilege. A friend of mine phoned me yesterday because, again, he was having a terrible quarrel with his wife. And there are people that when they quarrel, they are already talking divorce. So, you know, no, I don't think this marriage can work. I don't think this, you know. But before this get to man got married, he told me that there was one prayer that he always prayed, which was always praying that God will give him a special wife. God will bring a special wife to him. And so his question now is, given all the prayer that he has prayed, why is it this woman that God... <laughs> Why is it this woman that God brought? That they are quarreling, they are quarreling. And the Holy Spirit told me to tell, tell him something. Mm. God never forgets prayer. Mm. He never forgets prayer. Prayer is never wasted. Mm. And God told me that I should ask him, who does he think quickened him to pray those prayers those days. And he said, I should tell him that the reason that he prayed those prayers 
was because of what is happening to him now. And that now he is the big impediment to the answer to his prayers because he does not trust God to bring to pass what he has been praying about. So I told him, I said, stop complaining. No. Just wait and see. Huh? Because God creates harmonious marriages out of quarrels. And so we had a powerful prayer just now. Go before him and pray for this service. Just go before him and say, Lord God Almighty. This year man has said, prayer, <laughs> prayer with God is a serious business. It's a great privilege that we can come boldly before your throne of grace. We can come boldly to receive the grace, the mercy that is sufficient unto today. And so, Father, Lord God Almighty, the grace that you have prepared for me from the foundation of the world, even for this service, let me receive it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I was asking God, as I want to do, what do you want me to talk about today? And then he gave me a dream. And the dream, wow, frightened me because I felt that the dream must of necessity also be about me. But it must also be about somebody here. I have a friend. I have known her for a long time. And she comes from a polygamous home. And so I believe not knowing better she was dating a married man when she was young. And she wa wanted to marry the man. And she had a child by the man. And then she met the Lord. And when she met the Lord, she decided that she has to leave that man. Man was a wealthy man. And the man threatened her that if you leave, I'm going to cut you off. Nothing for you, nothing for the child. And she left. And you know, for a long time, she didn't get married. And then there was this very wealthy man who had just lost his wife. And she started dating this man and he proposed to her and they got married. And we were just so excited that finally God has done it for this lady until God gave me this dream. In this dream that he gave me, he told me that he told this lady not to marry that man. And that she did not listen. And after seven years, there was COVID and the man is dead. Now, I don't know whether I'm supposed to tell her or not. But my first reaction, because this to me is a story on disobedience. My first reaction is, I'm in trouble. There must be a relevance of this story to me. 
There must be something that God is telling me that I'm not listening to. I can tell you quite a few of them. Uh, but it also tells me, because it was in the context of my asking for a message for this morning that he gave me this message. So I'm going to express it in two, in two ways. There is somebody here who wants to get married. And God is telling you, don't marry that person. Please don't marry the person. But on a more general plane, there are those of us here that God is asking us to do something. And we are not doing it. And we are refusing. Please, it is time to repent. Think again. Think again. And obey. And so this morning, I want to talk about children of disobedience. And I want to situate it in kingdom dynamics. Because I have discovered that the real children of disobedience are the sons of God. And that the children of obedience are those that are sons of the devil, sons of Satan, occultists, because when they are told to do something, they don't argue. People don't argue with the devil. They don't argue with the Babalawo when he gives them a prescription. They follow it to the letter. But when God tells us something, we argue with him. Uh, because we don't die afterwards. We don't die afterwards. And we think that we can get away with it. I'm not sure that we can. So this morning, I'm going to tell you a number of things. I'm going to tell you from the scriptures, but please let me, let me give this caveat. If I ever give you any example that has to do with me, always know that is the wrong example. Mm -hmm. If I ever give you, if I am not a template. If I ever give you an example, I tell you something that happened with regard to me, always know that that is what you are not supposed to do. Because we only have one template. We have Jesus. The problem with obeying God, God is difficult to obey. Hmm? It's difficult to obey. I was, I was asking Karen, and I said, does God ever tell you what you want to hear? She said, sometimes. I don't think so. In my own listening, God does never tells me to do something that I'm going to do, that I would have done if he didn't tell me. When I think of the things that he asked me to do, he knows that I don't want to do them. He knows that if he does not tell me to do them, I would not have done them. I would have presented that it was not necessary. Because what he tells us to do is never convenient. But even more fundamentally, God teaches obedience by suffering. He will ask us to do something that would be against us. And we would have to choose between whether we obey him or we get into trouble. And a lot of the time, what we do is that we avoid the trouble. Huh? And we disobey God and avoid the trouble. It's, 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 it's stupid. Because the trouble that is going to come from disobeying God is so much more than the trouble that we are trying to avoid. And so 
The psalmist says, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Because people who disobeyed God in the scriptures always live to regret it. They always live to regret it. There's a scripture that took me a long time to understand. You know, at a certain juncture, God told me, stop reading Bible commentaries. I'm not prescribing it for you. Stop reading Bible commentaries. Determine what the scripture means yourself or determine it by what I tell you. Don't use other people's opinion to interpret. Isaiah 42 says, hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see. Who is blind but my servant? I become confused. How is it the servant of God that is blind or deaf as my messenger whom I send? And that's why if God gives me a message, I always feel it must be for me to start with. Who is blind as he who is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Hearing many things, but you do not observe. Opening the ears, but he does not hear. Now, this, this scripture works from two sides. Huh? Part of the reason why we don't hear God is because we hear so many, so many people. <laughs> we hear all kinds of things. We listen to gossip. We listen to all, you know. Uh, in my case, I'm always following what is happening to Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, <laughs> every day, what, what has happened to the man? What has happened to the man? Uh, but when we hear all kinds of rubbish, we will not hear what God has to say. Uh, when we see all kinds of rubbish, we will not, you know, we will not we will not see what God wants to show us. We are people under authority. I know God has established authority structures in the world. And he is the one that established those authority structures. And you will find that you might be up on one, you might be down on another one. And to the extent that healing wings is a healing ministry, you really can't be, be good at praying for the sick if you are not under authority. Hmm? If you do not obey authorities, if you do not, and the highest authority is God, if you do not obey, there is no way that demons are going to obey you because they know that you belong in their group. So if you are used to obeying authorities, and the authority can be your husband, the authority can be your boss, the authority can be the yellow fever on the road that is just directing the traffic. The authority can be the policeman. There are authorities that are established. And when we are children of obedience, we obey authorities. When we obey authorities, there are those that will obey us. And the part of those that will obey us is that he has given us authority over sicknesses and diseases and demons. Uh, but if we are not children of obedience, we cannot, we cannot operate as we should as the people under authority, as the people who can command and decree a thing. And it is established. So we really have to be very, very careful. We really have to be have to be careful. Let us look quickly at Hebrews. 4, 6. This is the only scripture that I'm going to open to you. The rest, I'm just going to read it. Hebrews 4, 6. Since therefore it remains 
that some must enter it. And those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designs a certain day, saying in David, today, after such a long time, as it has been said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also seized from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest. A lot of the problems that we have, a lot of the anxieties, things that rob us of our peace is because we are disobedient to the word of God. We don't obey the scriptures. Hmm? Because if we obey the scriptures, we will not be bothered about so many different things because everything about this life is answered in the scriptures. I want to look at some examples and I'm going to tell you about mine. Hmm? There's a man in the Bible called Jonah. And you know, the examples that I want to look at today are really not the examples of sinners. They are the examples of the righteous who are disobedient. Hmm? Jonah, there's no question that Jonah was a prophet of God. And God called Jonah and said, Jonah, I want you to go and preach to Nineveh and tell them, I'm going to destroy that city of 120,000 people within 40 days. Now, Jonah is a Jew and the Ninevites are enemies of the Jew. So ordinarily, Jonah would be excited to take this message to the Ninevites because he doesn't like them. They are the enemies of the Jews. But no, Jonah told God, I am not going. Point blank. Uh, you need to read that scripture to see that from the beginning, he told God, I'm not going. And God asked him, why not? He said, because you're not going to kill them. You will not destroy that city. I know you. Huh? Your mercy rejoices over your judgment. By the time I go and preach to them and say that they're going to be destroyed, you will change your mind and something will happen and then you will have mercy on them. So I'm not going. So as to make sure that God will not bamboozle him into preaching to Nineveh, he goes to the ports, to the docks and enters a ship that goes, that is going in the opposite direction from Nineveh. And that's where the problem starts. This is a prophet of God. That's where the problem starts because God now sent a storm. And Jonah knew that the storm was from God. From the, you know, he didn't bother. He went, went to sleep. 
So they had to wake him up and say, well, you, 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 because they're different people. This one is a Hindu. This one is a Muslim. This one is a Christian. This one is a, please, everybody call upon your God. And maybe one, one of them will be the real God and will answer. So they come and call Jonah. They're going to wake up. Come and call on your own God too. Huh? So that <laughs> and everything, all the things that they had bought, the traders, they threw them in the water to lighten the ship. It, it, it didn't work. And so they said, we need to find out why this is happening. And when they cast lots, the Lord fell on Jonah. So everybody turned to Jonah. I said, Jonah, what's going on? Who are you? Where are you from? What's the problem? And Jonah said, look, I'm a Hebrew. The problem that you are having is because of me. Hmm? I'm talking to somebody. Some of the problems that you are having now is because what God told you to do, you thought that you've gone scot-free, is a lie. Hmm? Said, the problem you're having now is because of me. So what you said, what, what, do you, what, what should we do? Jonah said, throw me in the water. And that is where the, the story takes a different dimension for me entirely. Hmm? Because, you know, why would Jonah say, throw me in the water? Jonah knows, in my understanding, that if he's thrown in the water, he will not die. Go back to the scripture. Hmm? So these people are not sure yet, you know. How. <laughs> then they say, look, oh, you don't want to kill a man, no. You don't want God to take you. Know. They threw Jonah overboard. And immediately, the storm stopped. And Jonah is not panicking. Jonah now turns to God. And he's now pleading with God. He's now talking to God. And God sends a fish to swallow Jonah. In the belly of the fish, you need to read the prayer of Jonah. I'm not going to go there. It's not, it's not a scary prayer. It's a relational prayer that he's praying because you know, I mean, if 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 you have somebody that is in the belly of a of a fish and is and he, you would think that God, God, oh, please, oh, eh? what's going to happen? Hey, no, that's not the prayer that, that Jonah is praying. And God told the fish to vomit Jonah back on dry land, and then He spoke to Jonah again. Go and give this message to them in any way. So this time, Jonah does not argue. Jonah enters the city and starts selling it. 40 days. I'm giving you 40 days. This city is going to be destroyed. And in an incredible manner, these people believed. They didn't say, who are you? Because this foreigner coming to tell us so, so, and so, etc. No. Uh, Everybody, the king, when he heard the message, said, even your animals must fast. You must not feed them. Everybody must call upon the name of the Lord uh, and say, God, please forgive us for whatever sins we have committed. And God said, I'm not going to destroy you anymore. And now Jonah wants to commit suicide because he said, you gave me a message and you have disgraced me as a prophet. Hmm? I delivered your message. 
But now everybody would, you know, when God says, you know, why do you want them to die? Why should they die? How is you not going to answer? You know the story, he brought a, 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 make a god over him that like, gave him shade, and then he killed the god, and Jonah is upset that the god was 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 eaten by a woman. And he's saying, you know, you are concerned about the death of a god, but you are not concerned about the death of 120,000 people. Uh, but the question is, why is it that it was the prophet of God? Who knows God? Who talks to God that didn't want to obey him? Why? Why does that happen? There is another character that fascinates me a great deal. And the way it's presented in the scriptures is not very clear. His name is Balaam. Balaam is a fantastic prophet of God. Huh? He's a prophet of God. He's not even a Jew. But everybody knows that Balaam is a prophet. Because when he says something, it comes to pass. And so when the children of Israel were coming nearer to Moab, the king of Moab looked at these people and said, these people are going to take over our land. Huh? So he sent some people to go and look for Balaam, sent messengers, sent them with presents and said, please, these people are coming and they will finish us. Please just come, curse these people. Because whoever you bless is blessed. Whoever you curse is cursed. And this is where Jonah started going astray. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture that says, if you come to a prophet, you must bring something. Okay? Because we talk about this thing, it's, it's not a joke. If you come to a prophet and you bring him a pot of edikaikon soup, let him first of all eat the edikaikon soup. When he has eaten the edikaikon soup, the prayer, the prayer that he will pray for you after eating the edikaikon soup is different from the one he would have prayed before the edikaikon. So you don't go to a prophet without anything. But these people are coming with a prophet huh? with so much. And so what is Jonah going, what is Balaam going to do? Balaam says, okay, wait for me. Let me ask God. So he goes to God and says, and asks God the question, if he should curse these people or not. Have you ever prayed that prayer before? Go to God and say, God, should I curse somebody? Balaam should know better. Huh? But the money that they are bringing is, is confusing me a bit. God said, you can't do that. You can't go with them. Mm -hmm. Because the people that they're asking you to curse, they are blessed. And so since they are blessed, they cannot be cursed. So Balaam came and said, I'm sorry. I can't do anything for you guys. Because these people, they're blessed people. There's nothing I can do. So they went and report to the King of Moab, that the man refuses to come with us, so I said, you know, increase the amounts of money that we're sending to him. Huh? Send more timber and caliber people. They came back again. They came back to, again to see, to see Balaam. When they came back again to see Balaam, hmm, Balaam said, okay, wait for me. Let me talk to God. Then he said, wait for me. Let me talk to God. God told him, okay, go with them, but don't say anything to them that I didn't tell you. And when Balaam decided to go with them, God decided to kill Balaam. Why did God decide to kill Balaam? And this is where we have to understand certain principles of disobedience. It is obvious that God has told this man, these people cannot be cursed. So why are you asking again? Huh? And so God says, okay, go with them. And there's a scripture in Ezekiel 14.4 that says that if there's an idol in our heart, God will answer us by the idol in our heart. 
God knows that Balaam wants to go. Hmm? And so sometimes when God tells you, okay, go, don't go if you know he doesn't want you to go. Hmm? Don't go. Don't say, you know, you're the one who told me to go. You know, I mean, we, we had that in interpersonal relations. You know, the wife says that, uh, no, don't, 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 don't buy me anything on my birthday. Hmm? She doesn't mean it. If you buy something, she will not reject it. If you don't buy it, you're going to get into trouble. So don't say because she said, don't buy anything. Huh? Because when a bad day comes, she said, where's my present? Say, well, but you said I should buy, okay, but you didn't even want to buy anything. That's why you, uh, that's, that's, so Balaam decided to go. And an angel of the Lord is standing in front of Balaam with a sword ready to kill him, except that Balaam cannot see the angel. Only his donkey can see the angel. And the donkey, when the donkey saw the angel, the donkey tried to take another route, went into the bush, and Balaam bit the donkey, bit the donkey, said, sweet donkey, move back to the listen. And the donkey can see what's going on. Huh? The angel stands in front of the donkey again. The, 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 the donkey tries to move to one side, and when he moves to one side, he scrapes. Balaam's leg. Balaam beat the donkey, beat the donkey again. Then they went to another place where there is no room. And the angel, the, the, the donkey, Balaam beat the donkey. And God opened the mouth of the donkey. Why are you beating me? Uh -huh. Am I not your donkey? Uh -huh. There must be a reason why I'm not moving. And that is when Balaam sees that there is an angel of the Lord that is standing there ready to kill Balaam. Hmm? His donkey could see it. But he could not. Who is blind but my servant? Hmm? He has been blinded by the money. Huh? So he said, okay, go. Go with them. Uh, they went up on a mountain. They killed seven rams. Seven altars. Huh? And then he gave an oracle. He said, I can't see anything that God tells me. I cannot, you know. Then the man takes him somewhere else again. They did it three times. Every time, Balaam gives a prophecy about Israel. And the man is upset. I said, I call you to bless, to, to curse these people. You are blessing them. He did not say anything contrary to what God told him to say. But we understand from the scriptures that Balaam could not forget the money. He couldn't forget the money. Hmm? And this is one thing that kills children of God, love of money. It's terrible. Hmm? Because Balaam now found another route. According to Revelations, he advised Balak, king of Moab. Huh? You want to get these people you don't have to curse them. They're already blessed. But if you get them to sin, they're finished. Hmm? So what must you do? Send your women to them. Send prostitutes to them. Hmm? In no time, they're going to be eating food that they're dedicated to idols. And that's how Moab got Israel because of the shrewd wisdom of Balaam. Prophet of God. He even prophesied about Jesus. He used to boast that he is a man whose eyes God has opened. And you know the story. There's one episode where one Israelite brought a Midianite woman into the camp. And Phinehas had to kill both of them. 24,000 Israelites died. What happened to Balaam? He was not spared. Say, this one is a prophet of God? No. By the time Israel came to overrun the place, they did not spare Balaam. He was killed. He was killed. 
So be careful. Huh? Let me give you a personal example. God told me, early in my relationship with him, he said, Femi, I want you to stop drinking Coke and Fanta. I've never fought God as much as for that thing. Hmm? I had an elaborate conversation with God. I asked the Holy Spirit, show me, where in the scriptures does it say a man should not drink Coke and Fanta? Huh? It's not in the scriptures. It doesn't matter. Don't lean on your own understanding. It doesn't matter what is. If God has said it, that's it. Huh? Then the Holy Spirit told me, what if I am asking you to stop drinking Coke and Fanta? And I'm asking you to stop because I'm your friend. And I told the Holy Spirit, I said, that is not a sign of friendship. A friend would not ask his friend to do something like that. Why is it that you are just trying to take everything away from me? What is Coke and Fanta got to do with anything? This struggle went on for like, for over two years. And God told me, what if I told you Coke and Fanta is bad for you? That was the part that I listened to a little bit. So in the end, I, I didn't do it for God. I stopped taking Coke and Fanta because he said it was bad for my health. Hmm? I'm not taking Coke and Fanta. 20 something years, must that be almost over 25 years? But it's a lie because when I stopped taking Coke and Fanta, I started taking Pepsi. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> now, 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 my logic was that. It was Coke and Fanta that God, you understand? If we, God said Coke and Fanta because, you know, I mean, personally, for me, I don't know about you, Pepsi to me is inferior to Coke. In fact, everything that Pepsi makes, for me, is inferior to Coke. You can't compare Fanta with Mirinda. There is chocolate and cheese. Huh? So I felt that it was just, you know, but this is just a, uh, Hmm? I've been I've been carrying this witchcraft. <laughs> you are laughing at me. I phone I phone people. I asked my wife to pray for me. I phone YMC in London to pray for me. I, I've been carrying this witchcraft because you see, mm -hmm, we learn obedience by suffering. Huh? At one juncture, God changed my taste buds that the water started tasting sweet. I just have a sweet tooth. Huh? You, you, you have to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And you have to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. <laughs> and you have to be determined to revenge all disobedience. when your obedience is complete. It's incredible that the children of God in the scriptures are the ones that fell into this trap. Look at the example of Moses. Huh? Look at the example of Moses. Moses, six dollars, he always knew there was a calling of God upon his life, but he took an initiative when God did not tell him. God did not tell you to do something, don't do it. Huh? So he killed an Egyptian because he felt that he was doing his, his people a favor. But the people that he thought he was doing a favor carried the message to Pharaoh. He had to leave. He was in the wilderness for 40 years. After 40 years, God now called him. Hmm? He said, I want you to go to Pharaoh and deliver my people. Moses says, no, I'm not, not me. I'm not going. 
Huh? He doesn't want to go because now he does not think he is worthy of doing it. Before he thought he could do it. Huh? When I met the Lord, I told everybody in my office, I'm resigning. I can't stay with you guys here again. I have serious business with God. I'm not staying here with you. And then the Holy Spirit told me, he said, who asked you to resign? I said, ah. I thought, he said, mm -mm, you don't think. You understand? You don't think. So I had to stay back in my office. So people asked me, ah. So Femi, what are you still doing here? I thought you said you are too busy for us now. I thought you said, you know, what I three years later, God told me, resign. I couldn't resign. Huh? I now sat down and said, if I resign, where am I going to live? What's going to happen to me? What's going to be? Then I asked myself, ah, but you are prepared to resign three years ago. So what was that all about? Was your shakara? Huh? I would have resigned three years ago. Because I would have established myself as a prophet, even though all kinds of things will happen. But three years later, nobody knows anything. All I could see were just the problems. So God called Moses. Moses doesn't want to go. He uses all kinds of arguments. Uh, and God got fed up with him. He said, you know, said, I am a stammerer. God said, you know, I am a stammerer. I'm the one that made you a stammerer. Hmm? With stammering lips, I will talk to these people. Okay, your yeah. brother will speak for you. And when Moses finally agreed to go, what happened? God met him and decided to kill him. It's in your Bible. I'm not going to go there. Why? Because Moses' obedience was incomplete. He did not circumcise his son. And that meant that he was outside of the covenant. And that circumcision is still applicable today to us. Because in the Old Testament, the circumcision was of the foreskin. In the New Testament, it's of the heart. Hmm? Moses was saved by his unbelieving wife. And I believe that part of his problem was that his wife did not want the children to be circumcised. And you can't, you, 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 you can't, you can't obey your wife and disobey your, your, your God. It cannot work. It cannot work. And Moses, Moses always scared me when I read Moses. Because Moses went up the mountain and he, he, he received the oracles of God. He received the Ten Commandments. And he brought it you know, on two tables of stone. But when he came down, the people were already worshiping idols. And Moses smashed the tablets. I, I told myself, this man is going to get into trouble. Because I don't know about you. Would you have smashed something that God wrote? Whatever anybody did, Moses went and smashed it. <laughs> huh? He scared me initially when I said, he wants to see the glory of God. I said, Moses, you are, you are asking for too much. You, this by you are asking for too much. But God did not say anything there. But when he smashed those things, I was surprised for him. And then after a number of miracles, they got to, the, to Meribah and the people started abusing Moses again because there was no water, no food, nothing to eat, etc. And God says, take your rod and go to the rock and speak to the rock and the water will gush out. And Moses went, went to the rock. And then he made a speech. Are we, supposed to be, are, we, are we supposed to be giving water to you people? When did you ever give them water, Moses? They said, speak to the rock. Moses hit the rock twice. Bam, bam, and water gushed out. And God says, 
you will never enter that promised land. You will see it, but you will not enter it. We've got to be careful. Huh? Okay, I came last week and told you the same thing. I said, God, you have to be very careful about God though, because we, we, we know him too much as a goody, goody God. Huh? But the same God of the Old Testament is the same Jesus of the New Testament. He is not unidimensional. He is multidimensional. He is a multidimensional God. It was God that chose Saul. It was God that asked Samuel to anoint him as king of Israel. And then he gave him a strange instruction. He said, go to Amalek because Amalek will lead my people when they were coming out of Egypt. And I want you to destroy them. I want them to be wiped off the face of the earth. Say, so kill everybody. Huh? Kill their men, their women, their children, their goats, their everybody, kill all of them. And Saul. Saul went and God gave him victory over Amalek. But what did he do? He brought a trophy. Number one, Agag the king. He brought him home. And then what did the people do? They selected the good things. Selected them. They were selective. Selected the nice things, etc. Huh? And they kept those and destroyed the other things. And that was how Saul lost the kingdom. Hmm? That was how Saul lost the kingdom. If it was not for the grace of God, David also would have lost the kingdom over Bathsheba. In fact, he lost it for some time because his son overthrew him. He ran out of Jerusalem. Hmm? Saul was rational. You know, I mean, the Bible says God is not mocked. And sometimes, Huh? We, we present a case as if God is a man. The person that says God is not a man that he should lie was Balaam. He said, you know, cause these people. He said, you know, I can't cause them. God cannot change his mind. He's not a human being that will change his mind. But he's looking for a loophole. You know, when you get a lawyer, huh? with a tax code, the lawyer can look for some loophole whereby you will not pay tax. Uh, and sometimes we think we can do the same with God. So immediately, immediately someone came to meet uh, 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 Saul. Saul says, ah, thank God, I fulfill the commandments of God. He said, fulfill what? So what are these bleating that I'm hearing of goats and something in the background? And I said, <laughs> those ones, I've just reserved those so that we use them to sacrifice to the Lord your God is a lie. Who told you the Lord needs those for, for a sacrifice? Uh, who told you that God needs, you know, you know, to obey is better than sacrifice? And to hearken that a farm <laughs> than a fat of rams. So because you did not obey God. That's it. The man still didn't stop, stop there. The kingdom had been taken away from him. But he's still begging somewhere. Please go with me so that the people will not know that God has left me. Still go with me so that uh, the reason I did it is I feared the people. If I did it, you know, come on. Uh, you can't use the fear of man to justify disobedience. It cannot be accepted. Hmm? It cannot be accepted. And so some of all these things, they are there. For example, hmm? simple instructions. Adam and Eve. Can you imagine that garden? All kinds of fruits must be there. But the one that they wanted was the one that was forbidden. Hmm? That's the one that they will be seeing from every, from every angle. If they are working, you know, they will be seeing that one. And they ended up 
eating the forbidden fruit. Hmm? Be careful. So that your heart does not lead you into disobeying God. The story of Abraham and Lot. Abraham said, choose whatever you choose. Uh, if you go left, I will go right. If you go right, I will go left. Lot did not say, uncle, you are the older person. Go first. No. The Bible says Lot looked, and then he saw that this part is green. It is lush. It is well watered. And he chose that part. And what he chose was Sodom and Gomorrah. And the part that he didn't think amounted to anything was Canaan, was the promised land. Huh? Let, me, let, me, let me make a confession to you. I, I, I needed to rent a house. And Jimmy, Jimmy Uluanuiga, you know, who was here before, is now in, he's moved from, uh, Dubai now to, to Silicon Valley, to San Francisco. He told me, he said, doctor, there is a special house that you need to see. This house is prepared for you. So he took me to see this, this house. When I entered this house, I had never been physically inside a house as beautiful as that house. Some of you have been to that house before. I've never been to a house as everything about that house was just fantastic. Uh, the design, everything. Kai! So I told the landlord, I want this house. Hmm? So while I was preparing, uh, when I went back to the agent, I said, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, who should I address the church? I said, no, 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 we have rented out the house. I said, ah, but I told you I was, he said, yeah, but one man came I'm paid before you, before you, you responded. Ah, I told him, no, 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 no. This, this, this cannot work. This cannot work. So I started with the man. So, so what, 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 what's what I need to do? He said, well, if you add a little bit more than what the man is paying, I can convince the landlord to give you the house. So I added a bit more than what the man was paid. And they changed this and gave it to me. And I moved into that house. Some of you came to see me in that house. I mean, you remember, like, yeah. oh, you came to see me. I remember uh, Fentala. I don't know whether Ladi has been there, but I know Fentala was there. Huh? It was the worst house I've ever lived in. Huh? Every room, rain was falling inside the house. Huh? Some of my furniture spoiled. Every room except our bedroom for some reason. Water, you know, I mean, one, one time we woke up, it was raining, and rain was just pouring all the way down. Every all the walls were waterlogged. All the, the, the beautiful wallpaper, everything. We had to remove it. I lost furniture. In, in the end, we had to move out of the house. We didn't pay the rent. We took the landlord to court. Uh, they gave us Nine, nine, nine million. Huh? But we should never have rented that house. Hmm? We should never have rented the house. I should have known when I wanted to pay and they said the man has paid. I should have just no. I said, ah, no, 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 no. I must, I must get this house. I must get this house. Big mistake. Big mistake, please. God is always speaking. Huh? I want, I'm telling you this, God is always speaking. Huh? Speaking to you. Look, a few months ago, the Holy Spirit told me, shouldn't you even check your websites? And I said, okay, yes, you know. And, 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 and I, said, I just forgot about it. And the problem with the Holy Spirit is this. He's not insistent. He just says it gently and he just leaves it. I didn't pay any attention to it again. Until about a week or so ago, Chuchu told me that our website is no longer there. 
That's when I remembered. And God told me to check this website. Huh? One China, China man has taken it over. The person, the, the person that we pay the, for the money for the website said that the thing expired and we didn't, you know, and then it was 60 days and somebody else bought it. Uh, so what's going to happen? He said, okay, we we'll talk to the person. So this China man says that we should bring $600 to recover our own website. We can't even, even NouveauSchools.com, he has taken it over. So that if I say I want to move somewhere else, I can't use that name again. I have to use, you know, and I thought to myself, but huh? God spoke to me. I had him all. But it was not, huh? it, it, it was not uh, insistent. It was not, he just, he just said it. Where I, huh? There are things that God has told you. There are things that you know he has told you. Please, don't ignore them. Hmm? Don't ignore them. Because now, it means that for, for you know, I, I, I was saying there is, there is an attack on, on the school. I didn't know part of the attack was that the, the, the website has disappeared. And it has disappeared for more than 60 days. And I have to look for the cPanel, and I have to see whether I can now set it up somewhere else, etc. You know, all that palaver. I could have avoided it simply by listening to a helper that God has given me. Huh? You cannot use prayer to counsel to, to, to counsel to counsel the, 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 the counsel of God. I went to pray for one boy in Igobi. He was going to enter into a, a bus. And the Holy Spirit says, don't go in there. He went in. So when he went in, he then sat down and started praying in tongues. He was praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. In the middle of the praying in tongues, that's an accident. He's paralyzed from the neck down. Hmm? He thought that the praying in tongues would neutralize the instruction. Huh? He didn't. I went to pray for him in the in the middle of the prayer, he fell asleep. I don't even know what the prayer did. Huh? He should have listened. Another girl, Mary, he was entering into the bus. He sat down and the lady sat beside her. The Holy Spirit said, get down. <laughs> Mary got up. The girl that was the woman that was sitting next to her said, Where are you going? He said, The Holy Spirit said I should leave. The woman that was sitting next to her got up with her, said, Holy Spirit said, You should leave. Oh, yeah, let us leave. Both of them got down. They entered the next bus that was sitting, that was behind them. Both buses were moving. They watched as the bus that was in front crashed. All the people that were sitting where they were sitting died. All of them. Uh, Mary, little Mary was saved because she heeded the voice of God. So, I'm going to take advantage of my position. I'm going to ask you for two prayers. Number the first prayer, I need you guys to pray for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking now. I need you to pray for me that God would give me the strength. He gave me Isaiah 41 10. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. He give me the strength to obey what you know. And then you are going to go before the Lord because you know the things that He has been telling you that you have been ignoring. Huh? You know the things he has been telling you. He told me to go and speak to an old man in Ibado. He called him Papa Lekutedu. I've known him. He's he he's he was the the youngest brother of my old man's mother. 
So he's, he's a grand uncle. He said, go and talk to him about Christ. I said, me? How can me, little me, go and talk to what effrontery? Huh? I dilly dallied until the man died. When the man died, I was in trouble. I was in trouble. I said, oh my God. Huh? Because when you read Ezekiel, he said, if I tell you to go and talk to somebody <laughs> and you don't go, I will put all his this in on your head. Huh? I went to a, a, a restaurant in King's Dominion in New York. I sat down and I had a long chat with God. I said, God, huh? see me. Huh? See me, I'm sorry. I just couldn't talk to them. I don't know what came over me. I'm sorry. I don't know what. I don't know how I behaved that way. I, I, I spoke to God for about one hour. He didn't say anything until I got up to leave. When I got up to leave, as I came out and I turned right, he said, Femi, no, go the opposite direction. When I went the opposite direction, I discovered that there was a door that leads outside this place. And I came out, you know, before, okay, I forgot. Before I got up, when I finished my prayer, I said, God, whenever I come here, I have a problem getting a taxi. Please get me a taxi. And he told me, go the opposite direction. I came out. Immediately I come out, there was a man that was sitting in a car. And the man pointed to me. He said, you, come here. I looked at who is he talking to? He said, you, 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 come here. I then went to see the man. I said, what do you want? He said, where do you want to go? I then discovered it was a mini cab. I entered the mini cab. It took me back to Far Rockaway. I said, oh my God. I asked God to give me a taxi. And I didn't even call the taxi. The taxi man called me. He's forgiven me. He has forgiven me. The next day, I entered another taxi. Huh? Then I started praising God. I said, God, you are He's just a wonderful person. You are just amazing. You are this, you are that. As I was, you know, then we were caught off in traffic. I would stop. God said, Femi, look up. When I looked up, he said, look to your left. I looked to the left. That was the door that I came out of the day before. I don't know how we got there. We were standing exactly where that taxi was the previous day. I said, oh my God. What kind of God is this? Why am I telling you this? Pray now. He will forgive you. Huh? Repent now. That which he has told you to do. Repent. Let's go to him in prayer now. Just talk to him about it now. And say, Father, Lord, God Almighty, I'm a son of obedience. I'm a son of obedience. I need you to forgive me. I need you to forgive and to cleanse. I need you to give me the grace to revenge every disobedience. Revenge your disobedience. No, no, if it was the devil that didn't want me to do this, ah, I will do it again and 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 again. So that it will be clear now that I've learned my lesson. Just talk to the Lord this morning and say, Father Lord, God Almighty. I'm speaking to you from the belly of a fish. I'm crying out to you, O oh God. I'm crying out to you, Father Lord. Forgive me. 
forgive me. My Father and my God, forgive me. Forgive me for every instance of disobedience. Forgive me, O oh God, for not heeding your voice. Forgive me, blessed Lord, for ignoring your counsel. Forgive me, O oh God, for leading on my own understanding. Forgive me, Lord, for exalting all kinds of nonsense against the knowledge of you for listening to the voice of strangers and ignoring the voice of Jesus. Forgive me, Heavenly Father. for allowing the fear of man to trip me. I plead the blood of Jesus this morning. For I know that you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse. I need you, O oh God. To sustain me, to help me to walk in the truth. Not to walk in fear, not to walk in lies. Keep me, O oh God, along the path of life. Make me, Father Lord, a man under authority, a woman under authority indeed. Let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done. In my life, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Fuentala, please, we are going to pray for us. In Jesus' name. Father, we come before you this morning and we just ask that as we have come before you where we have disobeyed where we have gone astray father we ask for mercy we ask for your mercy upon us this morning so that we can enter into your rest help us to enter into your rest father by trusting and obeying everything you say, no matter how we will look, no matter how hard it is, help us to just obey you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will help us, that as we are making the commitment, as we're turning away from disobedience, that Father, we're giving ourselves fully to obeying, obeying you, Father God Almighty. We're giving ourselves fully to obedience of your word, of your voice. 
And we can only know your voice when we fellowship with you. Help us to fellowship with you through your word, through prayers, through worship, through praise, so we know your voice and your voice only. Heavenly Father, we would not listen to the voice of strangers. We would not hear the voice of strangers. We would not let the distractions in the world, Father God Almighty, confuse us. We will be subject to your authority. We will be subject to your word. We will be subject to you. Because we're carrying so many burdens that we think we can only solve by ourselves. But we know that simply obeying you will bring us to the promised land. Father, Lord, we will enter the promised land. We will enter the promised land. We will not miss heaven. We will not miss you. We will enter into your rest today. We will enter into your rest. We cease from struggling with you. We cease from struggling with your word. We cease from struggling with your voice. Lord, we will listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit that speaks to us. Help us, help us, help us, Father, to walk in your rest. Let men see us and be wondering, are we not in Nigeria? Are we not in this world where there's chaos? But all they see is peace because we know that your plans for us they are plans of good to bring us an expected end. And we can only get there by trusting you, by obeying you, by being in your rest. Father, we rest in you today. We rest in you today. We rest in you today. Not the problems we're dealing with, not the issues we need to solve. Father, we choose your rest today. And we say we will not struggle anymore with you. We will not struggle. We will not run from you. We will not seek solutions on our own. Father, we will rest in you. In you. We will trust you. We will obey. Father, we will obey your voice. We will obey your voice. Because that is the only way. We have tried so many ways. Father, we have failed. And we have failed woefully. Lord, we repent. We repent, we repent, we repent today. We repent today. We are no longer children of disobedience. Father, we will obey you all the time. At whatever it may cost us in our natural mind, Father, we will obey you. Even when men laugh at us, Father, we will obey you. Even when it doesn't make sense, Father, we will obey you. We will obey you. We make a pledge, we make a commitment to you today. We will obey you. We will obey you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Can we have Begay? Begay, please, can you pray for us? Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all adoration because you are God. Thank you because, Lord, you have opened our eyes, Lord, to many things this morning, to many parts of our lives that we have been disobedient to you, Lord. Father, we have come before your throne of mercy and we ask for forgiveness. In every area of our lives, Lord, that we have not listened to you. Father, that has cost us to lose certain things. That has cost us certain pain, Lord. Father, we have come back to see we are sorry. Have mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, and help us. Father, do not let your wrath, Lord, Father, to be upon us. Father, we ask that you have mercy upon us. Father, we ask for your spirit 
to come and help us, Lord, to obey you at all times. Even when, Lord, it looks like it's a difficult thing to do, Lord, you will give us that strength that we need to obey you, yeah. no matter the cost. Mm. Thank you, Father, because you are our God. Thank you because you love us so much. Thank you, Lord, because you are always there for us when we call upon you. You always help us when we need help. Lord, we need help help with this one. We need help to obey you, Lord. Father, we ask you that this morning you will open our ears, you open our hearts to be able to hear you when you give your direction. When you tell us what to do, Lord, we would hear you and we will move in your direction, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen destiny please pray for us in Jesus name Father we thank you for once have you spoken oh God again that we'll hear twice this morning we receive from you grace, O oh God, to run with your word, that your word will burn in our hearts, burn in our mind, Jesus, that our feet will run in the name of Jesus. My Father, I will decree and declare, O oh God, that even this hour, this morning, O oh God, our obedience will be complete, O oh God. My Father, this morning, Lord Jesus, we surrender, our oh God, we come, we, we dedicate our hearts, our minds, our body completely before you, in the name of Jesus, that, Father, you would help us, Lord God Almighty, O oh God, that your word, your word will take serious, Lord Jesus, that, Father, Lord, will magnify your word, will glory in your word, will glory in your truth, in the name of Jesus, that, Father, our heart will be stayed on you. Eternal rock of ages this morning will ask for help, oh God, that will cease from fight, will cease from struggle, will cease from doubt, will cease from unbelief. The Lord, Father, Lord, our heart will be focused, will be stayed on you. Lord, this morning, oh God, will come before you at your feet to repent, oh God, for all the areas, all the times we've been, we've been, we've been rebellious, Lord Jesus all the time we refuse to agree with your word that we've chosen the respect of men than your glory oh God than your face oh God that will seek the face of men than your face will seek the hands of men than your hands We're not hearing you again. I believe there's a problem with this uh, system. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to apologize to people at home. I didn't know. I think I might have blocked you for the major part of this service if you have a testimony you want to share to the glory of god can i see your hand if you are on zoom anybody on zoom with a testimony this morning anybody here with a testimony Yes, Biggie. Good morning, Church. Good morning, Doctor. Um, we want to thank God for journey messages from worry 
to Lagos. Um, we have officially moved from Wari and um, we're in Lagos and preparing to move on um, to Ireland. So we ask that the rest of the process that is involved, um, he will take control. And for also helping my wife um, through the crisis, even though um, she still has this trouble, you know, every in the morning, and that's why we're not even in church. Um, we just ask for prayers that God will continue to strengthen her um, through it. Thank you. It's well with her. It's well with the baby. In the name of Jesus, we will continue to pray. Anybody else? Yes. Sister Abigail. Praise the Lord. Uh, I just want to thank God again and again for how he, he is always looking after myself and my two girls. Last month, as usual, <laughs> I'm beginning to feel like my nickname is house rent and school fees. <laughs> uh, last month, you know, to somebody, I was just, I was at work and somebody called me and said, uh, come, I have something for you. And he took me to his car and there it was loaded with food stuff. I was like, which one is mine? And he was like, take all of it for you and your girls. I was flabbergasted. I said, okay. How am I going to get this home now? Okay, if you would drop me at the bus stop, maybe I, I will get one of these buses, load all this stuff into the boat. He said, no, 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 don't you worry. I'll call you an Uber. And he called me an Uber, and this Uber took, my, uh, took me with this a whole lot of food stuff home. When I go home, my daughter looks at her, uh, Mom, where do you get all this from? I said, it's God, it's just God. I've been given this testimony because I, I was worried about my wages. I felt yeah, it wouldn't just meet up. So that's one. The second one is, in spite of my worry about the wages, in spite of this, I, I still got extra. God still gave me extra. And I was able to get through the month. I, I really thank God. The way he comes through for me sometimes at the last minute. I don't even know what to say. And then maybe this might be sound a bit silly to some of you, but um, my, my project back there, Anito, usually at school, when they would give her some paper, we all just got fed up of trying to get her to write in the books and everything, because she would just scribble all over the thing and toss the paper away. And sometimes you just want to just, this child, if I... God just said, just leave her. And I left her. Lo and behold, yesterday, she picked up, she likes to scribble on papers and things like that. So she picked up a paper, uh, paper, a biro, I was like, there you go again, and you're going to just scribble on it. And so I left her. By the time I went into the room and came back, she had written on several lines, perfectly formed, number two, number two, number two, number two. I was like, ah. My daughter, uh, her sister called me and said, mom, look, wow, wow. And he has written number two. You know, he's going to be 17 next year. And this is something that she should have been doing maybe at one and a half or two years. And we've been struggling with this for all that time. The fact that she was just able to pick up a paper and form number two several times perfectly. I give glory to God. It's a start. It's the beginning of something. And then today, again, while we're having praise and worship, usually she will sit down, she will nod her head. She will, but I was watching her, and she got up and started doing this funny jig, funny dance, and she would raise her hands. 
and praise God. And I, I think she's getting somewhere and I'm thankful for the little beginnings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. Anybody else? Let us be upstanding. Let us give our offering. As we bless the Lord with a song. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, his grace is sufficient for us. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for us. My God, shall be According to his riches in glory, in his angels, joys of violence. Sister Esther. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's service. We thank you for the testimony. We thank you for the family that you brought from Bori to Lagos. Thank you because we perfect everything that concerns the baby, the family. And we will soon hear that you have done it for us. Lord, we pray, Jehovah, Lord, as we go this week, your presence will go with us. You will make an angel of fire and about us, so Lord. Lord, every home, every family, both far and near, you will watch over us. Oh, Lord, we decree and I will declare for the remaining days, weeks, and months in this year, we shall hear good testimony, oh, Lord. Lord, we will not hear any bad news concerning any any of our loved ones, both far and near in Jesus' name. We decree divine provision. We decree divine protection. We decree divine favor upon us in the name of Jesus. Lord, this way you order our first step, oh Lord. You will lead us the way we should go. You will open our ears to hear from you, oh Lord, that this is the way. We, and we give us and give us the power and the strength to walk in it, oh Lord. Thank you, Daddy, because we will not walk into that devil and oh Lord. We will not walk into that trap of the enemy. But Lord, oh Lord, Lord, your light will shine on our home path, oh Lord. And the world is full of darkness, but you will lighten our whole, oh Lord. You will receive, oh Lord. We will walk in your grace, in your power, and in your strength, oh Lord. Lord, I decree in your name that is above every other name, O oh Lord. As we go this week, O oh Lord, you will watch over us, O oh Lord. You will watch over all our, all our loved ones in the name of Jesus. You will watch over our children, our wife, our husband in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy, because we will come here again with testimony. Thank you, Daddy, because your name may Lord, we continue to be glorified in our life. We will pray and receive with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Say to the righteous, you are the apple of God's eye, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are the apple of God's eye. You are the apple of God's eye.